Welcome to the Asian Dating Podcast. Today, I have a friend who I've been friends with for, gosh, 27 years. So today, I welcome John to the show. And the reason why I wanted him on the show is because, A, he was married for, what, almost 24 years, went through a divorce, then he started dating again. So I wanted to kind of pick his brain a little bit, and hopefully he's completely honest with us. And we'll just ask him a bunch of questions and have him answer it and put him in the hot seat. And so welcome to the show, John. And if you can tell the audience a little bit about your background, and then we'll get started. Hi, Matchmaker May. Yeah, it's good to be here. Thanks for inviting me after all the counseling that you've given me from, uh, well, even when I was married, up and through now and for many years to come, I'm sure. So uh, I'm John. I am 52 years old. I was married for 24 years and just realized, took a, took a few years and just realized the marriage was kind of a loveless marriage, um, especially for the last several years. And seeing friends that were in healthy relationships and hearing life stories of people and your relationship with your husband and all sorts of things made me realize I was missing a lot in life. And I'll be honest, I was I got divorced when I was 50. So who wants to start over when they're 50 years old? I mean, that's past middle age. So there was a lot of thought and worry and concern, excitement. Had it not been for my friends, for you, for a lot of the support I had from both friends and family, I don't think I could have gone through that. But it was probably the most difficult time, definitely the most difficult decision I ever made in my life. And I look back on it now. And it's also, I would describe it as my biggest accomplishment I did. The fact that I chose to do what I did with how difficult it was. Uh, And now my life has changed entirely and my dreams really have come true. Because when I got out of my marriage, my thoughts and hope was that I could start over and find love and be happy. And now that's happened. Uh, I have found true love and I'm extremely happy. My dreams have essentially come true. And I've never, honestly, I've never been so happy as I am right now. So a lot has has changed. I've really gone through a metamorphosis in my life and I'm happy to be here. So that's kind of a short little background of where I came from and what my story is. Okay. So let's back up a little bit. So when did you leave your ex-wife and how long has that been until now i was seriously contemplating it uh i think around two years ago where i realized you know you think after 23 24 years of marriage you hear the stats of how many people are divorced and how shocking it is and then you wonder how many of those people that aren't divorced probably should be and i was kind of in that mess too where i didn't realize we're free we can make our own decisions. And when you're married for as long as I am, it just didn't seem like a reality to me. And I always like to say, I heard the Eagles song already gone. And there's a line in there where they say, oftentimes it happens where we live our life in chains and we never even know we have the key. And I heard that. I was like, holy moly, I've been living my life in chains being in this marriage. And I never even knew I had the key all this time. So that, and like I said, um, So to answer your question, I probably went through a good three or four months of really deciding, is this really what I want to do and talking to people and coming to that final decision. And when I finally did it, it was uh, it was a shock, obviously, to her because it's just I don't think she heard that Eagle song and thought of it the same way I did. Uh, So to hear that was just like, what, what, what? You can't just leave. I think that was kind of a shock to her and still you know, was a shock to me at that time. And I want to say it was about a year and a half when I walked out those doors, which was, again, the hardest decision I ever made in my life. When I left, there were plenty of tears that came out of my eyes. Uh, A lot of counseling sessions I had. Uh, You were a tremendous help in all of that, which I'll never forget, along with other friends and family. And it was really just a huge burden that I really was worried that i wouldn't be able to get over. And now I guess I'm kind of that example of somebody that was able to succeed and 
have absolutely no regrets and moving on to my new life. So it was about a year and a half ago when I did that. Yeah, that must have taken a lot of guts and uncertainty, right? Like you don't know what's going to happen. Am I going to be okay? Am I going to be depressed? Am I going to date again? Do I want to date again? Do I want to get married again? And all that stuff. Cause you, it might, if you were married for 24 years, that's half your life, right? Like that's half your life. And now you're getting back out there doing online dating and lots of change so much with social media, with the online dating apps, like yeah. All that. We had none of that. We had none of that. We had none of that when I was dating. When when I got married, there were no apps. There was no internet back then. So yeah, there were no iPhones back then. So, or, you know, any of these social media groups. So I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So when you started um, dating again, how long did you give yourself before you said, you know what, I'm going to go back out there and be positive and not lose hope? Or were you like, let me just go through the motions and just meet new people? Like what was going through your mind when you first said, wow, I'm free. I could do whatever I want. Like what did, how did you decide what to do and when? Well, I've always been curious. And, you know, the idea of, wow, being single again, it has its fears and that sort of thing. But I was also curious how these apps work and that sort of thing. And I actually joined a a free app. It was, I think the Facebook dating thing and uh, it was free. And I remember telling you at the time and you were like, John, you've only, you know, left, you know, it's only been, I think about three months to answer your question. When I left, I really wanted to find myself. And I know that sounds kind of like a hinky term that we hear a lot of, you know, sometimes uh, odd individuals say, but it really was, I had to um, learn to love myself again to live on my own again. I was very independent before I got married and I had to find that independence again. So I did a lot of travel just by myself. Uh, My stress was obviously even prior to me walking out the doors, uh, there was a lot of stress there. And instead of hitting the bottle or doing drugs, I focused entirely on exercise. I lost 47 pounds in the span of about nine months from the time I walked out the door I just went straight into exercise where I got addicted to exercise. I was working out, running about five times a week. And I was also in the back of my head, I was realizing you got it. You're going to get back out there again. You got to look good. And that was a motivation too. And another thing I'm, you know, I don't mean to sound narcissistic, uh, but it was something I'm very proud of. You got to understand prior to when I was married, I didn't have a lot of things that I would say that I would brag about myself on, that I would say I, I did really well on. And it was really afterwards when I walked out the door that I look at myself and I'm like, wow, you really did a fantastic job. The fact that you lost the weight, you're keeping it off. I've honestly never been more open-minded and happier. I don't complain nearly as much as I used to. My ex-wife used to get on me and say, you're always complaining. So I think my attitude has gotten better. Uh, so it was just, it was probably... You know, I I think I joined that dating app within about three months, just out of curiosity. It wasn't, let me find somebody. It was really just to see, a lot of it was, ooh, there's girls out there who are looking for a man. I'd be kind of curious what they look like. You know, just, there really wasn't a strong interest in that matter. Um, And then when I did join it, I remember talking to you about it. And I remember you, it's kind of nice to have friends in, in good places. And you're one of those in a sense of you're an expert in matchmaking and dating and that sort of thing. So I would always turn to you on questions. And I remember you saying things like, John, you can't have profile pictures of you wearing a, a wife beater t-shirt or something like that. You gotta, you gotta, or, or selfies, because I'm probably the worst person at taking selfies. And I didn't really much care about that. So when I was serious, I think it was, well, you would probably remember, because um, we were talking about that, where I think you were even at that point where you said, okay, you're, you're pretty, you're, you're ready to move on now. I think it was after a good six months, maybe a little bit. No, I think it was around six months where I think where I was kind of saying, maybe I should take this more seriously and develop a better profile. And that's where you said, okay. And you gave me some hints being hire a real photographer, get some real pictures taken go get some real clothes because all I had were t-shirts and sweatshirts and, and, you know, and, you know, nothing fancy. So 
I went to Nordstrom's and had one of their dressers uh, dress me up and they did a great job, spent some money doing that, but it was also my reward for losing weight. I needed to get new clothes anyways, because I couldn't fit in the clothes I was in. So, um, and when I had that, I had a photographer, got some photos taken. It was funny. I always liked saying the story. When I was on that dating app, I remember I'd get maybe one or two likes a week. And then when I had the new pictures, which I showed you the pictures, and you approved of them, and you were telling me your favorite ones, add this one, add that one. And when I threw those on, it was now, I think, about three or four likes a day that I was getting. So it was a total 180 uh, degree turn. And it's funny because I've since then, sometimes even with the girls I would go on dates with, occasionally I'd look at their phone. They'd let me look and see the guys that I was competing against. And we'd have some chuckles because they were doing the same mistakes as I was. So, um, yeah, it was. I know I'm kind of going off on a tangent because there was a lot to learn back then but i would say it was about six months it was kind of quick and i would say generally six months is really fast i think even three months i think three months was when i joined a dating app and six months was when i took it serious but i really did get over my divorce super fast in a sense of when i walked out of there oh there were tears and i was breaking i had some breakdowns but i would say within the first week and due to the support of my friends and my family i was able to succumb that really fast where I really realized you did the right thing and you don't have, you shouldn't have any regrets. And within a week's time, I, I remember even you were just saying, wow, I've, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen somebody so healthy mentally as you are from being married, especially after 24 years. I mean, it was almost, I mean, wow, you know, that's a long time. Do you think that you were maybe already one foot out the door a long time before you actually made the decision to leave like so that made you get over your divorce you know quicker in a way that you're ready to move on quicker not that you'll ever get over it because I'm sure 24 years there's a lot of history between the two of you and your life and how you became who you are today but would you say that you were mentally checked out before you actually physically left yeah, as I mentioned earlier, from seeing, um, hearing that song, which was uh, probably a good six months before I walked out the door, yeah. I had contemplated it where I was realizing you can really do this if you really need to. And it was also seeing my friends. I remember having dinner with a good friend of mine, him and his girlfriend. He kind of did the same similar thing as I did. He'd been together for about six years. It's just a girlfriend. He didn't marry her, but they were always together for six years. And he realized I'm not happy and left that and found someone new in his life who I remember sitting across from him at dinner and he and his uh, new girlfriend. And she was looking at him with his eyes while he was talking that were just full of love and holding his hand and just appreciated him and respected him so much. And I remember thinking, I don't have any of that. And I'd had talks about that with my ex and, you know, it was always, well, that's not the way I am, you know, you need to accept that, John. And I said, okay. And I realized that's who I am. I want affection. I want love. And it's kind of crazy because I found love now. And she looks at me that way. And she always wants to share with me and compliments me all the time. And sometimes I pinch myself and think, does this girl really, how can she love me? Which is really a, a negative thought process but it's one that I've kind of lived with because I've never been she tells me she loves me probably four times a day she'll just say it randomly sometimes I'll laugh because we'll be watching a show and I'll just be like wow isn't that something she'll turn around and just say I love you and I'm just kind of laugh and she goes why are you laughing and I just think that's just so random that you say that but it's so sweet at the same time so yeah I was checked out uh, there was a lot of thought processing when I finally came to the conclusion I had a good three months prior to walking out the door where I planned it. In fact, I was ready to do it. And I had to wait 30 days because we were in a different state at that time where I needed to file. And you can't file until you're living in that state for six months. So I had already decided five months into it and I had to you know, go through 30 days you know, to in order to be able to file. And that was a tough 30 days because I had to go with a program of essentially pretending you know, that nothing was wrong. So that was pretty rough too. But yeah, I was checked out a good three months prior. So I think probably nine months 
uh, from the time I knew I was going to leave, from the time that I actually started dating, joined the site and, and was serious about it. Because within six months after I left, I had really, like I said, done a lot of things by myself, discovered myself more and became proud of myself and confident. Because confidence, I'm sure most of your viewers know, that is a true element in uh, developing a relationship with anybody, whether you're a man or a woman. You got to be confident and love yourself because if you don't have any respect for yourself, chances are the other person's probably not going to have much respect for you either. So how did you gain more confidence after your marriage? Like, how did you gain confidence to go out there and date again and to be out there and, you know, just how did you get yourself out there and realize, you know what, I, I'm going to do this? Like, what is it the clothes well, look, that you bought at Nordstrom? Is it all the you know, therapy sessions you have with your friends and family, you know, I definitely think that helps, right? Having a support system to talk about your feelings and what you're going through and to make things more real. Yeah, that that's that's a big part of it. Uh, friends are huge. I don't know how I would have gone through it without friends. Uh, that was huge. Losing the weight was a, 47 pounds. I lift weights and 47 pounds is a lot of weight. And sometimes I realize, wow. So uh, looking better, you know, I remember looking in the mirror one time and I was like, are those abdominal muscles? I, I mean, I'd never had, even in high school, I'd never had any. And that just encouraged me to, you know, diet even more so, you know, watch what I was eating. And people say, how'd you lose it? It really is the old saying of diet and exercise. Oh, it's mostly diet. No, it's diet and exercise. I worked out five times, you know, a week and I worked out hard. And so it was uh, that feeling better, looking better, having clothes that I'd never had before. I remember my, my aunt, or I'm sorry, my, my I'm sorry, my sister-in-law, I visited her and she said, John, don't take this the wrong way, but you got to ditch those jeans you're wearing. You're wearing dad jeans. I said, what are you talking about? She said, you got a nice butt. And you ain't showing it. But what that? And these are jeans that I had been buying my whole life. And so when I went to Nordstrom's, I got jeans as well. And these things were kind of tight on my butt. But I was like, oh, I guess this is what they mean. And the, the guy who was helping me, clearly, I wasn't his first client. Um, he had some fun with me, of course. But when I left, he was just like, you're looking good, man. You're done. And so having a pair of shoes, a nice jacket, you know, things that were actually fit me and showed my physique uh, made me feel better. Uh, my friends and the, the weight loss and so forth. And just mentally, I felt healthier. And I'm still not 100 percent there. You know, when my girlfriend tells me, compliments me and says how handsome I am, she says that a lot. I've never been told that, that I can ever remember. Maybe I'm sure occasionally you know, my ex-wife must have said it occasionally in those 24 years, but I don't ever remember that. I don't remember compliments being thrown my way. And so when she says that, sometimes I, I, you know, my first instinct is, no, I'm not. And I have to say, oh, maybe, maybe I am. And then I say, well, I am to her. And that's, that's all that matters to me right now. So yeah, there was that. Um, I don't want to say it was an ego booster. Well, no, it was an ego booster, but you know, you also have to stay modest and realize, you know, there are, you know, you got to look at yourself in the mirror and be humble at the same time. I think that's a good lesson for anyone that's in a relationship now is to not withhold compliments for their spouse or their boyfriend or girlfriend. It's like, be generous with compliments and be generous with nice words and, you know, things like that. I mean, it's free. First of all, you don't pay someone to give them a compliment, right? It's, it's just something that we just forget to do and take people for granted and, so that's kind of good to always express your gratitude for something in life every day, whether it's your partner or something positive that's going on in your life. So especially when you're a man, May. Yeah. Because yeah. women are so used to hearing compliments. Right. That's a nice dress. I love your purse. Oh, your shoes are beautiful. I love your nails. Oh, your your eyes. Oh, what's your ethnicity? You're so beautiful. Oh, are you are you Asian? Oh, what 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 part of you know, Asia are you from? Or whatever it might be. Or, you know, the, the old saying of, God, you're so beautiful. Uh, men, we just don't, we don't get that. Yeah. You know, it's, women do not, you know, we're still the pursuers. The men are still the pursuers. 
And, you know, I'm sure there are some women out there that are that will, you know, cut to the chase. And, you know, my girlfriend was one of those where, you know, right away she made it clear that she was into me. Yeah. Um, and I think that was a huge plus for me. It was, wow, this girl actually really likes me. I don't have to try to convince her or win her over or feel like I'm, you know, uh, competing with all these other men which is really, when you look at it, I'm sure you've had podcasts on that about how these dating sites are so in favor of women yeah. and not of men. So if you can give a man a compliment, it means so much to us. I don't think, I can't think of a single man that's not a moron who would say they would not like to hear a compliment. Right. Good point. Good point. So what are some of the lessons you've learned out there when you were online dating? Like, what are some things that you can share with the listeners, uh, what to do, what not to do, helping the men out, helping the women out? Well, I would say a lot of this comes from you. Um, I would say one is, is when you are doing online dating, uh, you know, try a different, for, try a few different sites. Um, you know, you don't have to stay on just particularly one. Uh, watch for the frauds. I almost got, I almost got bit that, that was, a, those were some stories that we shared and I'm sure we don't need to go through them all right now. I mean, that would be another, I could talk for a long time about some of those. There are so many frauds and catfishing, you know, where you think you're talking, I will say just to summarize it, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. When you have a gorgeous woman who for some reason doesn't want to meet with you or talk to you on a zoom call or something. Yeah, she's probably not real. And I fell for that uh, right away. And it was just, you know, fortunately, I realized it was a scam. And I, you know, you just think, oh, well, once they ask money, this person never asked for money. I'm sure it would have been a matter of time before they did. But they still wasted a lot of my time because I fell for the scam. And I'm an ex-police officer. So you would think I would be able to notice those things. No, you know, when you're looking for love, it's easy, very easy to get suckered into things. So that's one of the things that I would say is watch out for that. If it seems to be too good to be true, it probably is. Um, secondly, make your profile interesting. As I said, from my earlier story, I had two likes a week with my lame pictures and my lame profile. Then when I redid the profile and had my friends, especially you, give your opinions on these are the best pictures you should use, and I had professional pictures of me, you know, and some of the likes, the things that I, I even had a picture of me in a weight room lifting weights, because that's a big part of, and that was tough for me to put on. I think you were saying, no, put it on, put it on. I was like, oh, that makes me look kind of like a schmuck, doesn't it? No, that's what you really like doing. You lost weight, throw it on there. That ended up being my most, that and a picture of me in a suit ended up being my most liked uh, images, because some of the um, dating sites will show you that when they click and say they like an image. So, and have confidence in that and be unique, be different. Say, say something funny, say something interesting. Uh, when you see somebody you like and you reach out to them, don't just say, hey, you're really pretty. Want to meet up? You know, have something interesting to say. Let them know that you read their profile. You know, one of the things that probably won over my girlfriend, she kind of says this, is in her profile, her profile was pretty lame in the sense of it didn't have a lot of information in it. And one of the things that had in there, like, what are your favorite likes? And she said, you know, uh, chocolate, um, what are they, um, turtles. And I'm thinking, really? That's all I got here are turtles? So when we went on a hike, um, she didn't know this, but I had um, pre-purchased some turtles. And when we got to the top of the hike, we had a little picnic, which she didn't, it totally caught her by surprise. And I, this is our first date. And I opened up the little container that I had and I had some orange juice with champagne to celebrate the hike that we went on and I pulled out these turtles and she was just like are you kidding me are you serious you seriously got me some turtles that's my favorite so you know that was I'll give myself a little pat on the back for that that that, that was not by any means how I did most of my gatherings my first dates it's just on that one I kind of thought outside the box and I thought oh it was a fantastic first date. And, um, you know, she kind of says, yeah, you won me over on that. And, you know, we obviously got along before that, but that was a big, so try to be different when you're on there, try to be interesting, you know, and also try to find out, ask them questions. Don't do all the talking 
especially when you go on a date, don't be, you know, the only person chatting about yourself, me, 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 you know, all about me kind of thing. One of my girlfriend's friends, who's a man is uh, single, and I become friends with him too. And he shared with me this date that my girlfriend set him up with. And he was really looking forward to it. And afterwards, she said, so how was it? We both asked him and he said, she sure likes to talk. And he said the whole date, he got in maybe a few words and everything was da 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 And afterwards, this girl was calling my girlfriend saying how interested she was in this guy. And he wanted nothing to do with her. And she was really hurt that he didn't want to go out with her again. It's kind of like, girl, all you did was talk about yourself. And she was clueless to that. And also another thing I would say is be open to feedback. You know, you, Matchmaker May, would never hold back in telling me, John, why did you do that? Why did you say that? Or don't do that. To a point where sometimes I'd be, I'd feel like a little lost child and I'd be like, Um, because I didn't know. I didn't know what the protocol was. And obviously, you know, dating is kind of like a a job interview. So that's why it's fun to go out and do something. I'll tell you, my best dates where I had the most fun and clicked with somebody was when we went on a hike, you know, and it wasn't just my girlfriend now, but, you know, in the past, because I had so many first dates that were um, happy hours or lunch. And we would sit there and chit chat the whole time. And even some of them would go for two hours and I'd leave and I'd be like, okay, I wouldn't mind seeing her again because she's pretty, but there wasn't really any super clicking there. We just, it was kind of like a job interview. There was no connection versus when you, you know, go off and do something fun where you're not necessarily required to be with them the whole day. Cause that's the other challenge. I go skiing with this person for a day. What if I can't stand them? So it doesn't hurt to have a conversation before then and see if you can get along prior to that. And I've, I've had, you know, before finding my girlfriend, I probably, I think you and I were brainstorming one time. I think I probably had a good 70 dates, first dates prior to that, and maybe second dates out of all those, maybe five people. <laughs> so I don't think you had um, 70 first dates, did you? You really? know, we talked about that. Not and when you look at all the dates I had from the time until I started when I got serious with my significant other now to before that, um, I would do roughly around five to seven dates a week. Because remember, I was, yeah, sometimes I would do two in a day. In fact, my girlfriend, we went on a morning hike. I had a date scheduled that evening. Did you cancel and it? I canceled it. <laughs> and what's what's funny, what's ironic about that is she did too. In fact, when when we were, uh, we ended up having a long date because when our date was essentially over, our hike was over, we went and had lunch and we were kind of like, I don't want this date to end. And she was like, I don't either. So we hung out the rest of the day together and she was texting and I thought canceling. she was just texting her friend or something. She was canceling. The guy was actually, she was saying, hey, I can't make it tonight. So, you know, that's kind of funny too. So yeah, that's good uh, just be yourself, just yeah. be yourself and, um, you know, try to be confident. And don't have any expectations, too, because they always say when you're looking for love, it's harder to find it. By the time I met my girlfriend, I, I literally was expecting her. I, I went through so many things from psycho girls to boring girls to just weird girls, girls, a, a girl that kept a dead cat in her freezer. I mean, you name it, just weird stuff. So when it came to having the date with my current girlfriend, I was expecting nothing. Yeah. Uh, I was even expecting her to cancel because I have cancellations too. Yeah. We're just kind of like, how did that, why did that happen? Did I do something? Did I say something? And now I realize, no, there's just a lot of competition. Right. And she, and this girl did to me what my girlfriend did to the date she had that night when she was with me, you know, where they, right. you know, all of a sudden cancel for no reason. You get mad. It's like, there's a lot of competition out there. You know, you got to understand that. Well, I like the fact that you said, you bought the chocolate turtles for your first date. And that really shows the guy making an effort, right? It really shows that you were going above and beyond and trying to make a good impression on the first date. I didn't realize you went out on 70 first dates, but that could be the number, right? It could be, maybe it's 50. Could have it been might have been more than that. Right. Might have been, I mean, right. Because literally when I wasn't traveling, it, right. it was, yeah. I mean, I was getting tired of it. 
it was really tiresome. Remember me telling, complaining to you saying, yeah, but that's a lot of dates. I don't, I don't recommend someone going on five to seven dates a week. Maybe, probably not. Maybe two a week, I think is good. I mean, you could get, you know, dating burnout or dating fatigue, but. Oh, let me tell you, the worst part is when you call them by the wrong name, (laughs) because (laughs) I've done that, or you get them mixed up and you're like, um, yeah, well, you, uh, so you graduated from the University of Colorado and that was, you know, how did you like that school? And they look at you and they say, no, I didn't. (laughs) And you think, oh, no, that was a girl from yesterday. Right. Oh, no. No, I would absolutely agree with you that that was I I was literally maybe that could go to a little bit of the fact that I didn't have as much self-confidence in myself. I literally wanted to learn and get out there and practice and practice and practice. And, you know, sometimes I still, you know, my girlfriend tells me you're still complete. I'm still completely clueless when it comes to a girl liking me. We'll go to a a restaurant or or a concert or something and she'll tell me about a girl who was hitting on me and i'll say she was just being friendly what are you talking about <laughs> and then she'll say no when the girl gives you her personal says hey this is my personal email like that was her business no she said this is my personal phone number and email when she says that that's more than business like oh maybe you're right <laughs> so there's still a lot of that cluelessness and what i wanted to do was i thought the more i get out there the more I can practice and learn and get better at this. I like that that you're saying you should go out there and practice for people that are coming out of 10, 15, 25 year relationships. It's okay to go out there and date again, especially in our dating environment now, right? Like all the apps are different. People are doing social media. People are texting. So it's good that you have the mentality to go out and practice because that's what you needed, right? To build your confidence. So that's a good tip to give people. You know what else it did? It also didn't make me, I know this sounds really, mm, I don't know how else to word it. So I'm just going to be blunt. It didn't make me care as much either. I know that sounds what? That sounds like a real mean thing to say. What I mean at is, what I get at is prior to being married, when I dated, it was kind of like, if I was lucky, I would have maybe one date a two or three weeks, you know, they didn't have these dating apps and I was no good at going to clubs and meeting people. So if I met somebody that I was interested in, that was almost a conquest. Can I get them to like me too? Oh, what if she doesn't like me? Oh, when you have so many dates and an opportunity to date so many people, you're not as worried about trying to be that individual that they like. You just be yourself. And if they don't like me, if they don't, you know, even if I'm interested in them, and they don't respond to my emails or my text messages, I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh my, I might've lost my, my true love. No, there's, guess what? I got another two lined up for tomorrow if I need to. And I know that sounds chauvinistic, but it really is a reality. And it's something, I mean, even if you can have two or three dates a week, you know, you don't have to worry as much. Oh, what if I lose a one you know, my soulmate out there, she's not your soulmate, man. If she's not into you, you move on. And it's so much easier to move on. Sure, you're always going to have that, ah, man, why isn't she messaging me back? I had that, even dating as much as I did. But it's so easy to just move on to the next person. And, you know, one thing that I really enjoyed you telling me, I remember you saying to me, because I would tell you some of this, I'd be like, May, I mean, I told you stories about the woman I nicknamed Vomit Woman. (laughs) <laughs> um, you know, who I was her knight in shining armor. Remember her? I mean, this yeah. is a girl that got just sick, drunk on a date and vomited on my shoes. And, um, you know, I kept her warm. She left her her iPhone in an Uber and I had to fight to get that back. I got it back. I drove her all the way back to her place. I walked her to her place, made sure she got settled, you know, and then she didn't want anything to do with me again after that. Because, you know, and it was, I was just like, Really? And your words to me on that, along with some of the others that I um, had an interest with, were it's her loss. And, you know, when you and that means a lot when you think about that, like, yeah, when you have enough self-confidence and you realize, you know, if she's not into me, it's her loss. Because, you know, if I would have I was pretty sweet guy to that one individual girl and she clearly didn't appreciate it. And okay, why would I want to be with this person? 
right? So I'm actually, I look back on it and I say, I'm glad that she had a bad attitude after that. It was good because my goodness, if I'd stayed with her or if somehow she'd gone out with me again and I fell in love with her or something, she's probably not the kind of person I'd want to be with. So what else, um, when you're doing online dating, when did you feel like you should meet in person? Like, did you text these people a lot? Did you call them? Like, what, what do you good advise question. for the people out there? Well, good question. You know, I'm, I've always been concerned about a uh, woman's safety and especially in today's world, you know, you hear of these crazy stories and, you know, Netflix loves to promote the Jeffrey Dahmer story and all these you know, if I was a woman, I'd probably be terrified to go out, you know, but the honest truth is that's a very small minority of men, I, I believe, that are that way. But at the same time, you know, I respected that in a woman. So some women, uh, I would kind of handle it as a, what are you comfortable with? Would you like to talk on the phone first? Would you like to meet up first? With my current girlfriend, we texted a few times. We never talked on the phone. We just, she was like, yeah, let's meet up for a hike. And I picked a hike that was a public place. And she told me afterwards that she shared my profile with, with her friends and stated where she was going, the time she was going. So if anything were to happen, you know, she uh, and I would even encourage a woman to maybe say, hey, do me a favor. Send me a text an hour into my date so I can, uh, you know, get out of this maybe if I need to. Or, oh, no, you know, um, my grandmother's sick or whatever it might be. But um, or even just to rest assured, I'm OK kind of thing. So to answer your question, I was very uh, maybe I was a little bit I still look back on it. And I sometimes I think I was a little too, too timid where I expected the woman to be shy in meeting instead of being a little more abrasive or a little more. Um, uh, forthcoming you know, or hey, aggressive. forthcoming. Yeah. And saying, hey, let's meet here. You know, I, I remember meeting somebody in. It was an exercise class we did together. And afterwards, she was like, hey, you want to go grab some dinner? And I said, sure. And she goes, why don't you drive? And she jumped in my car. And I thought, oh, my gosh, she got in my car. She's really trusting. I mean, that's how paranoid I was. So I think you need to not be that paranoid and, and maybe have a more open mind to it. But I also think as women, they need to be safe and make rest assured that they are safe. You know, maybe keep that pepper spray in their purse or whatever it might be. But I mean, it's just, unfortunately, it's a world we live in. But I think they also need to be trusting to a fact of, I think if you have a conversation prior to that, that's going to help. I mean, I, there were a few women that I had a lot of text conversations with. And I was like, this girl, I think she's awesome. And I did. And because she lived a little further away from me, about an hour and a half drive, I was kind of like, why don't I talk to her? So we had a phone conversation and she was the biggest bore. And I realized we have nothing in common. I mean, texting, I didn't realize texting could be so, she sounded like my dream come true texting. And when we talked, I was, I realized I don't want anything to do with this person. Um, so I think it, you know, in some cases it can work out where you don't have a conversation did in my relationship I'm in now, but I, I think it can't hurt to at least do a phone call. Yeah. Those phone calls, yeah. though, can be so nerve wracking and you're nervous, but you got to remember they're nervous, too. So just, you know, cut through the chase and save some money, you know, where you don't have to spend money on a on a drinks and a meal or whatever it is and have that first conversation. Decide if you want to continue. Yeah. I mean, dating can mm -hmm. also be pretty costly, right? I mean, yes, you make a great yeah. living. You, you know, have a nice car, nice place to live, but I'm sure if you added up all your dating expenses with those 70 women, it wasn't cheap, right? I mean, yeah, I'll share a little secret with you too. Uh, that was, that was a lot uh, that, yeah, you're right. Because I'm very much the type of, I believe a man should pay. Uh, now there were some occasions where I would drive up North an hour or an hour and a half to see them. And they'd say, let me get this. And I'd be like, okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, but I would always be paying. And yeah, with all the dates that I told you I had, yeah, even happy hour, uh, you know, I'd go to happy hour and then I'd be hungry and I'd be like, oh, let's order food. And then I got a $50 tab and I'm like, well, there's another $50, especially when it wouldn't amount to anything. But a funny little story that I'll share with you is in trying to look better, not just with the clothes, but I'm also kind of a hairy guy, as you can see. 
Um, so I got a pretty hairy back and it's my opinion that women don't like hairy backs. So I would about every six weeks pay about a hundred dollars and get my back waxed, which not only cost me money, but it was also very painful. And I'm a wimpy guy. So, um, I don't tolerate pain very well. And, uh, when I met my girlfriend and after we became serious, she was saying, I don't need that. And I was like, no, no, let me do that. She's like, no. I, I like your the hair on your back. I'm like, seriously, that's gross. <laughs> so I, I so hey, that's a hundred dollars a month that I've been able to cut out on that. So again, yeah, it, it, you know, that's another expense in the dating thing. You know that I don't have to. Not that I'm going to let myself go. I still work out and take care of myself. But yeah, that's just kind of a funny little story about that. So with all the dating expenses and the phone calls and the people you've met, uh, what's one piece of advice you can give? <laughs> to someone in your situation, like coming out of a long relationship and they're getting back out there again? Like what are some parting words you would like to give somebody? Be different, don't be ordinary, but also be yourself. Humor is really good as well too. I watched a lot of YouTube videos on how to get back there and date, the best colognes to get and that sort of thing. And that's all materialistic. It really comes down to your true self. When you're on a dating app, it is true that they're going to see pictures. So your pictures need to be good pictures. And you can't, you, you want to look your best. Um, but also don't be fake. You know, you, you don't want to use those apps to take care of blemishes or whatever it might be. You need to, you, know, you don't want them to be surprised when they see you and be like, oh, you don't look anything like your pictures. But you also really want to be yourself. And humor is a good one. One thing that made me more confident is I remember uh, the talk show guy, Greg Ferguson. I don't know if you remember who he is. He was a fantastic interviewer and he would flirt with girls and his, his guests, I, I should say, um, and do it in such a nonchalant, funny manner. You know, one of the things that uh, really got uh, popular is that saying of that's what she said from the office, which I still think is hilarious. Um, and sometimes that can break the ice. You know, one of the things that I would do is we would have a conversation, especially if it was over dinner or something, and she's looking at the menu and I'm looking at the menu and she's flipping through it. And we're talking about our lives or whatever it might be. Let's say we're talking about her dog, you know, and she's looking at the thing and she'll say something like, wow, this is just, She's looking at the menu saying, this is just so big. And I'd give her a look and I'd say, are we still talking about your dog here or the menu or whatever it might be? And it's a test in one area to see, you know, if they get offended by that. OK, well, that's my sense of humor. Sometimes I can sometimes I can be a little bit uh, too corny, uh, but that's the way I'm in. I am. Sometimes I, I like to be the funny guy in the class clown. And if the girl can't tolerate that and she gives me a weird look or something, then, okay, you know, she's probably not a match. So be yourself, but going back to the great, you know, the Craig Ferguson thing, if you watch some of his interviews, it's a way he would just sit back and be like, so tell me about yourself. So what's it like being matchmaker May and saying it in a fun manner um, where the other person really trying to get them to come out of their shell and realize this doesn't have to be taken so seriously. This is a date, sure, but we're just having fun. We want to have fun here. So if you go out on a date and expect to have fun and don't have any expectations that, oh, I might meet, this girl's really pretty. I really got to impress her. I might meet my soulmate. No, you're just going out to have fun and see what they're all about and see if they're a bore or see if they're interesting. So if you go in that date and you just really you know, throw the gloves down and say, so what's going on with a big smile? And you smile a lot and you have a good time and your expectation is to have a good time. That I think is what's going to win it over for you and determine if you found a match or not. Did you ever meet women that you were so, so on the fence about with their profile photos and their bio? And then when you met them, they were actually, they blew you away. They were actually prettier in person or more interesting in person? Like, did you ever have those nice surprises? Yeah, I had one. One that, that was that way. Uh, she ended up being a bit of a weirdo. 
but she was one of my few that I had a second date with. I, I did, she had kind of, kind of, I mean, I had to go both ways. I had somewhere, you know, there's caution when you look at the pictures and they don't have a full body picture, uh, you know, and I'd go out with them. I'd be like, Whoa, okay. Um, and then others, uh, you know, so it's rare that they surprise you the other way around, but this person, I could kind of tell she seemed fun and she, she had a picture where she was laughing and she just looked, I love the picture because she just looked like she was having so much fun. I wanted to go out with her just because she looked like a fun person. Then when I met her, I was shocked at how pretty she was, but that happened one time because her profile pictures weren't very good. And I was happy with that because I was like, okay, good. Because if she had some profile pictures of her, you know, close up or whatever it might be, she would probably, I would have had a lot more competition. Turns out she wasn't a match for me, but doesn't happen very often. Yeah. So you're saying a woman should have a picture of her laughing and kind of like a candid shot. Would that be a good way? Yeah. If she's, if she's a fun person and likes to laugh again, don't be fake. If you're a serious person, uh, you know, if you see, see things in black and white, you want somebody else to kind of be that way, then I'm not saying, you know, have pictures where you're sad, but your pictures smile. Something my mom always told me, you know, John, you have a beautiful smile. Oh, mom, God, it's true. Everybody has a beautiful smile. Yeah. So smile on your pictures look like you have fun. But this almost every picture she had, she was laughing and she was with friends just laughing. And it was like a hysterical laughing. And and I met when I met her, I realized that's how she is. She wasn't faking it. She was a very pleasant person in that perspective. Yeah. So uh, I would absolutely, if you're an outgoing, fun person and you want to meet somebody fun, don't hide that. Yeah. You know, have pictures of a variety and please don't have photographs of places you've been to that you love. That I cannot tell you, I'd say a good 30, 40% of the pictures I would see on girls' profiles would be a beautiful scenery of the sunset. Hey, we all love pretty sunsets, but we're not on a dating app to look at sunsets. We want to see what you look like. And I know that sounds chauvinistic, but you know what? It's the other way around, too. The girls that are looking at us, at us guys, they're not wanting to see a picture of the fish that we caught. Right. They want to see the picture of the guy, and they want to know, is this guy trim? Is he in shape? Is he heavy? Is he skinny? You know, what's what's he look like? So, and it's the same thing the other way around. So if you have viewers right now seeing this saying, oh, he's, I can't believe how chauvinistic he is because he wants to see what a woman looks like. No, you can't tell me it's not the other way around too, because it really is It's kind of like a meat market on these apps. So you're flipping through and you're swiping right, you're swiping left. And it really Plenty of girls that I talked to would tell me, oh, yeah, I'm not, I don't even read the guy's profile. I right. just, oh, he's, he's nice, swipe right. Uh, he's ugly, swipe left. Um, you know, and it's just kind of like, all right, well, I'm guilty of doing the same thing. And then if there's a match where they like me back, then I read the profile. Yeah. So, you know, it, it really is important, you know, in, in looking your best and reflecting who you are. Okay, one last question before I let you go. So how long have you been dating uh, your girlfriend now? July 2nd was when we had our first date. So okay, so July to now, so it's been six months, right? Yeah, it's about six months now. So what's a good gift to give somebody mm -hmm. who you've been dating for six months? What do you think? Just for Valentine's is coming up. So I want to give the listeners some ideas. If they've been seeing somebody for six months, what is a good gift you would like to receive? Let's put it that way. Yeah, um, I think especially now, uh, you know, the box of chocolates is kind of expected or just now probably giving her a box of turtles wouldn't depress her much. That would make oh, her cute. happy because she's okay. a fanatic with that. But um, and, you know, if you forget about it was funny because she said to me, what are we doing for Valentine's Day? I never celebrated Valentine's Day when I was married. <laughs> Oh, so we always, yeah, we both saw it as just a commercial and it just kind of shows you, you know, kind of the lack of effort we had in that matter. Um, although I shared it at the same time as she did. But um, when she said that to me, I was like, oh, crap, I need to yeah. book a reservation. Yeah. OpenTable.com, baby. They'll always have a, have a um, you know, so I jumped on right away and 
you know, booked a reservation. But to answer your question, I think something meaningful uh, and photographs always work. If you don't have a photograph of the two of you, there's something wrong. You know, not saying you have to take pictures all the time. My girlfriend loves to take pictures um, and she's always sharing them on Facebook so I can snag them whenever I want. But to have a photograph of the two of you and have it in a nice little frame um, and maybe, you know, you can even get frames nowadays where you can get them inscribed. So if there's a favorite saying or a line from a movie or a line from a song that she loves or something she said to you or you said to her, you know, hopefully there's something that you can think of that means a lot to you that you can put, you know, in a frame on a frame or it and put in a picture of the two of you. Now, my girlfriend has me beat on that because that was one of the first things she did with her job. She, you know, works at a desk, so she wanted to have photographs and stuff. So if I gave her another one now, she find a place to put it, but it's not like it's super unique. But that would be, you know, something that takes uh, some thought. You know, and that's just off the top of my head. You know, there's plenty of other things you can do. There's a lot of things that I see where you can get um, a take a photograph and have it made into a canvas or have it molded where it looks like a painting. You got to watch. Uh, there's a lot of scams that do that, too. Where You, you know, I ordered an ornament for Christmas of the two of us, and it was supposed to be like a 3D ornament that I saw an ad on Facebook. It turned out to be a scam and it was a horrible product when I got it and they overcharged me and so forth. So you got to be smart. I always recommend people to look at, you know, the history and the reviews, but something like that, an ornament of the two of you together when it's done right, um, you know, it, it can make it. But worst case scenario, if you forget or whatever it might be, take her to her favorite restaurant, you know, or have some balloons at the restaurant or flowers or um, another thing, too, that I forgot to mention that I did that really wowed my girlfriend was when I traveled, um, I travel a lot. And there was, after we first really got together and were close, I went on um, a trip to the United Kingdom for a week. And I wanted to surprise her with flowers at her work. Now she's, you know, some women may not like that where they might be more private, but I knew that my girlfriend's very social with her employees. And I knew that, already knew that she had told her employees about me. So I wanted a little extra so I had flowers delivered to her at her work when I was at the UK she couldn't believe that that happened that I took the time to order flowers from the UK guys it's really easy to do <laughs> um, you know I mean there's plenty of websites you know to do I, that so yeah. but that that really made her excited and for the women watching or you know listening to this podcast please don't make the guys do all the work you know if you really like a guy what's wrong with you know, doing something for the guy and making reservations or something. How odd would that be if you were like, hey, maybe not for Valentine's Day, but you surprise him with a dinner out to his favorite restaurant. And you say, we're going out tonight and it's my treat. You know, I'm, I'm very much into the man pays. And even now, um, my girlfriend, we have such a great relationship that she'll um, occasionally, you know, surprise me and say, I'm going to buy this for you. And she knows I like to treat her and I love to spoil her. But, um, you know, we just went on a big trip and, you know, she wasn't she didn't hesitate at all to pay for some of the things. And she didn't throw it in my face and say, I pay for this. I pay for that. She would just be like, hey, you know what? I got the plane tickets. And we're going here. And I'm like, wow, well, those weren't cheap. Um, so, you know, there's just little surprises like that that mean a lot. And it shows you that, um, OK, she she loves me, too. Well, thank you, John, with that great end of the story. And wow, how times has changed from when you first started, you know, you were getting into the whole dating apps and dating life and <laughs> stories about your crazy dating stories until now. So yeah, now you're completely divorced. You're happy. You lost 47 pounds. I mean, gosh, that's a lot of weight. So Great it's job. Been 40, it's been, it's 40 now because I just gained another seven after my uh, trip. Still, that I had to 40 Europe. pounds is a lot. Yeah. Of I mean, for you, for you to realize, gosh, you know what? I, I'm going to make some changes in my life. And that takes guts to make changes in your life and to do an overhaul of your life, of your workout schedule and your diet and your, 
things to eat. So great job. I'm so happy for you. I'm happy that you're happy and everything's working out well. And one, one last thing that I forgot to mention, I'll make this real quick. When you go back to dating, do not talk about your ex. Yes. Don't, yeah, it's you, not necessary. You know, that is something that I right. knew, I knew going in, I never made that mistake. And quite frankly, even now, you know, it didn't have the most comfortable divorce. Uh, but even now I wish her the best and I have no, you know, I, I don't like to bitch about her or complain about her. It just brings negativity. Yeah. And, it, and you want to, you know, there's that, especially if you are angry or upset, you want to vent all right, vent to your friends. Right. Don't vent on a date. So I that's the last last other thing that I wanted to throw out there that's very important <laughs> because I, I think a lot of people are tempted to do that. Right. Okay. Well, thank you, John, for joining me thank today. You. And I will talk to you later. Bye, everybody. Okay. All right. <laughs> Bye.